Have you ever seen a cannon so large the shell it fires is bigger than a full grown man? You'll see just that from today's sponsored video, World of Warships. World of Warships is a free to play game available on PC. You get to captain historical warships such as my favorite and the most famous ship of World War II, the Yamato. If you're weird and don't like massive, beefy battleships, there's plenty of other varieties of ships in World of Warships that you can play as, such as cruisers, destroyers, battleships of course, aircraft carriers, and even submarines. New content on World of Warships is released every month which keeps the game fresh and there's fantastic graphics to go along with that new content. For this month only, you can go to battle using characters from Azur Lane, which I'm sure many of you out there are going to thoroughly enjoy. Azur Lane content comes in the form of commanders and skins for select ships, my favorite of which I will pop up on screen, I just think these ones look the best out of all of them. And of course I just mean that I like the art style guys, calm down, calm down. And one more thing, World of Warships is also available on console, so you have no reason to not give this game a try. What are you waiting for? Captain a warship of your own today for free using the first link in the description down below. Use the promo code on screen to receive an awesome starter pack including 500 doubloons, 2,500,000 credits, 5 days premium time, 1 premium container, and 2 unique commanders. I'll see you guys out on the seas. I hope so far I've at least piqued your interest in World of Warships, but if I haven't already, stick around for some gameplay here and maybe you will be convinced to give it a try. I am taking out, as I said, my favorite ship, the Yamato, and yes, this is a sponsored video, but to be honest with you, I quite enjoyed myself playing this thing. It's a tier 10 battleship and jumping straight in from basically having never played World of Warships before, just seeing videos on YouTube and whatnot, to playing a top tier battleship. It was honestly a little bit easier to pick up than I had expected. I was really worried that I wouldn't have any idea what was going on or how to play, but that was actually resolved rather quickly. I didn't even have to complete all the tutorials. It's a really simple game to get into. Granted, I don't know a whole lot about tactics and strategies. I still don't even after playing for the quite a few hours that I have played so far. I do like starting out the match by kind of going toward one of the edges of the edges of the map. And why do I do that? Because I am basically a big old machine of artillery for my team. I have really long range guns that can do a lot of damage, have a lot of penetration, and I like to just kind of sit back, try to snipe people. I don't have good spotting range. I'm not going to be able to see that well on my own anyway. So it's nice to be kind of on the back of the line and rein in artillery fire with your massive 18 inch cannons that the Yamato has. These are the biggest cannons ever to be serviced on any kind of vessel in the water, ever in all of history, and it has still never been topped today. If memory serves, the projectile is about six feet tall. That's a little bit shorter than me, but taller than most people, and it weighs 3,200 pounds. That thing is basically just getting launched 20 miles or so, and it acts as a massive 3,000 pound bomb. Can you just imagine that kind of firepower? The Yamato kind of blows me away, and that's why I decided to play with this ship. Again, I'm sticking more toward the edge of a map as I'm making my way to, I guess that's the left side of the map, uh, down there in the bottom right of the screen, and I'm just lobbing shells out from basically across the map. You see these people 20 something kilometers away, and my shells are definitely getting there. I'm just not exactly the best at aiming and leading. Um, it does take a little bit of practice. It is a lot easier than you would expect though. I really like the aiming system for this game. And so I'm just gonna basically take advantage of my team's spotting, lob shells out, and even if you don't have somebody spotted, if you can kind of guess the relative position, you can still shoot at them and deal damage even if you're not seeing it happen on the screen. And real quick, I would like to point out that I had also thought of the genius idea of it's just best to be on one side of the map because I rely on these massive turrets as my primary weaponry, but the problem is they take a very long time to traverse. They only move by a couple degrees a second, and so if you have to kind of switch sides uh, which direction you're shooting on the ship, it's going to take you a very long time to get those guns around, and you can kind of remedy that by kind of pointing everybody on one side of the map and that way you don't have to switch directions as often and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to go to the edge of the map like I had. If you guys have ever played a war gaming product before like for example World of Tanks they tend to like to do uh, these abilities and what do I mean by abilities well if you look at the bottom of my screen you see I have the fire equipment repair equipment or whatever 
I have extra health, and I also have scouting ability. And this comes in handy very often. I, <laughs> The amount of times I had lost a lot of HP on accident just trying to learn the game, and as long as you can make, make it out of trouble and be able to find time to repair and heal, you can get a little bit extra health back. And so it is a little bit more forgiving and results in more fun in my opinion. On top of that, your crew, like your commander for example, have special abilities. Um, your ship has abilities, you can kind of modify certain abilities to do certain things. For example, I have abilities on my ship that decreases the time it takes to traverse my turrets. So my turrets turn and spin around on target a little bit quicker than they would stock. Uh, my scouting range is increased by like 10%, things like that. And it really helps you kind of tailor your playstyle and what you want your ship to ultimately be. Playing the back of the map here, I'm trying to finish it off this ship with very low health. I don't really know my ships entirely yet. I know a very select few, but I know that the small ones are pretty weakly armored and my guns are going to absolutely obliterate them. And so you see me even on screen there take a shot at somebody that wasn't spotted anymore. And as long as my shots stay true to the target, I will hit him even though he isn't spotted, which I think is pretty neat. There seems to be some kind of destroyer or something in front of me. I honestly have some of the biggest problems with destroy destroyers and those fast moving ships because they sneak up on me and they hit me with the torpedoes and that's pretty frustrating at times but it is ultimately a skill issue on my end and that's something you guys can do if you want to play that route if you want to be fast and sneaky have good spotting and things like that sneak up on people with torpedoes then maybe a destroyer's the ship for you they're also very agile as in they can kind of just change direction rapidly, accelerate rapidly, slow down rapidly, and they're really good at dodging shots, especially from a big BV battleship like me. And I think a lot of uh, more experienced players tend to lean more on the side of destroyers because spotting is very important and the mobility that you get with them is surprisingly useful. You'd think if you're sitting out here on the ocean in a big massive ship that you would not really care that much about being mobile. How mobile can a big old warship get? Well, you would be surprised and you will find out if you decide to play the destroyer route. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be taking some pretty hefty return fire here in a couple of seconds. And it ends up starting a fire on my ship and my health is slowly going down. As you can see in the bottom, my equipment is kind of regenerating. You can use so many equipments per battle. And now that my repair is gone, I just kind of have to wait for my crew to manually put the fire out. If I had a repair ready, I could instantly put that out, which would be great, but I just didn't. Fast forwarding a couple seconds here as I'm getting destroyed by the enemy team, I kind of just get ganged up on. I think a lot of people see the Yamato and get a little bit scared because it is a very powerful ship in the right hands. And so I kind of get focused down, lose a lot of health, but I finally got some of my abilities back. And so I started to repair. I got a little bit of a health boost. You see in the bottom left there, my ship, uh, the health where the green is, is where it is actually slowly regenerating to thanks to my handy crew. I managed to survive and push onward to actually contribute to the game. <laughs> and I get one of my first kills ever on World of, War World of Warships, and it was that shot right there. That felt really satisfying, finally actually sinking a boat with the help of my team, of course. Immediately following that, we end up winning the game based on like the whole ticket type system. Uh, it is very similar to like the conquest where you have to control zones on the map and thus you will kind of gain or lose tickets or whatever it is um, to actually win without killing every single person on the enemy team. This is actually probably the most rewarding match of World of Warships I played in my entire playthrough. I was just minding my own business, kind of sitting behind this island, um, trying to get long range shots while being protected by the land. And then all of a sudden we start getting flanked. And so I'm kind of running away toward my team here. My poor buddy behind me is doing his best to defend us from him or from the enemy team. And I'm trying to provide support when I can, but dude, it just takes these turrets so long to actually turn around. And I decided it's best for me to just keep on trucking with my boys in front of me and start putting in some lethal fire onto the targets at really close range, which is gonna help me be able to aim effectively and hit shots easier. I gotta say, the sounds in this game, the sounds of a volley going off of these guns is really cool. I like those a lot, and the graphics, I think, look pretty damn good, too. In all in all, I think it just really does help add with the immersion. You see the water effects, the splashing of the rounds, the little wake trails off of the boats. It's just neat stuff. So anyways, we're pushing on into this horde of enemies, and it's just the three of us, and we're kind of just receiving fire from everywhere. Thankfully, not me. My teammates up front are taking the brunt of the damage, and that leaves me to just kind of spam shots 
at this uh, that battleship. I don't know. It's a pretty heavily armored ship, though, so I'm a little bit concerned about shooting it in the hull. I don't really know where to shoot it in this situation because I just the angle of his armor, I don't think my rounds are going to penetrate. And yes, that is a real thing in, in World of Warships. Warships do have armor, and they have a lot of armor. And so if you angle that armor, you will be able to actually decrease the effectiveness of incoming fire. That is a trade-off though, because usually if you're angled, you can't point all of your guns at the person you want to shoot at. And like right here, for example, I have to turn myself completely broadside to the target behind me in order to actually get all of my turrets pointed at him. But this also means that I'm basically 90 degrees flush to him once I actually fully spin around all the way. And that means he's going to be able to penetrate my armor a little bit easier. A lot a bit easier for that matter. It seems the lone wolf that was holding them off as best he could back there on my team earlier has finally passed. And now that leaves our flank open to this couple of enemies behind. And yes, it is only two of them, but they kind of do have a really good flank on us. We're dealing with a lot of targets from a lot of directions right now. After a long battle with the people behind our flank, I end up just kind of pushing forward because I was starting to get away from my team and I didn't want to deal with all of them by myself. That would mean I'm pretty much guaranteed to die. But I do want to take credit for, at least in my own head, I was holding them off as long as I could as my teammates were pushing on forward and were able to survive. And that's why it felt really reward rewarding to me at the time. I do my best to finish off this little ship right in front of me, but before I can get my guns reloaded, he gets finished off by my teammate. And then I continue to take barrages of incoming fire. Now I'm kind of the point man for my team, as in the enemy team is gonna be looking at me first. I'm gonna be the closest target, and thus I'm probably gonna be taking the most fire. And that's really not good because I'm on low health, with no abilities left as far as like my repair and my okay, healing and all that. And so I'm just kind of playing around with my airstrikes, seeing what I can do, and then I ended up getting just slammed from I don't even know where. Even if I didn't, I'd have probably ran right into those torpedoes. So either way, my game was over. But nonetheless, I do recommend World of Warships. I had a fun time playing it. Thank you, World of Warships, for sponsoring today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later.